Hello, everyone, and welcome back to Intro to Python here on Cybrary On Demand. I am your instructor, Joe Perry, and this is the unfortunately pun-based lesson, lesson four, uh, for loops. Those of you who just came from lesson three will be aware that I had the depressing realization that I had unintentionally written a pun into my <laughs> lessons, and that's okay, but that's, that's what happens, and I guess we just have to live with that now. So in lesson four, we're going to understand the concept of looping, what it actually is, what it's for, what it does, how we use it. And then we're going to learn and we're going to implement a specific type of loop called a for loop. So loops are a fundamental part of flow control. Uh, they, they're essentially, they're, they're one of the things you implement based on Boolean logic, just like you do with if statements. Now all of programming, as I've said before, and all of computer science and all of, uh, well not all of, but a huge chunk of math is in some way derived or derivable from uh, from Boolean logic, but loops are a very specific implementation of it. What they do is they take a piece of, of code, they take some sequence of actions, what we would often call an algorithm or a set of rules, and they repeat that sequence of actions until some condition is met. So they may apply logic to every member of a set. If you have a list of items, they might apply logic to all of that. Uh, they might count to a specified index. They might just count up by one number each time or by multiple numbers, depending on how you structure it. Or they may cycle through some series of options. Loops can be used to implement all sorts of things. In the next lesson, when we talk about while loops, you'll see how programs that are always on or programs that you know last forever are executed. And a lot of those will make use of while loops uh, to perform sort of what we call an infinite loop or, or basically uh, a loop that doesn't terminate. And you can see the comic right above me. Bob is our infinite loop specialist. Generally speaking, when you're creating a loop, you're going to give some initial value to help set the condition. Uh, we'll talk about that a little bit more in the next lesson as well. For loops in Python, you actually can get away with not using uh, initial values pretty often just because of the way Python is structured. It will often fill in, your, fill in your special variable for you or fill in your conditional for you. So for loops, an example here, for all of the items in this list, remember I said we could apply logic to every member of a set. For all of the items in this list, the number one, the letter lowercase b, and the number 150, print that item. And below that you see pretty pretty close to what you would see in Python. Um, it wouldn't You wouldn't say for i and list, you would use whatever the list's variable name is. And you couldn't use list as the variable name for reasons that we'll discuss later. But this is roughly Pythonic. So for i in list, print i. All the print statement is doing here, we're not going to talk deep about functions, all the print statement here is doing is taking whatever value is given to it and it's writing it to the screen. So for i in list print i, well, let's have a look. Is there an item in the list? That is the conditional upon which this is actually being evaluated. So the for i in list, this for loop, is an implementation saying, is there an item in the list? If yes, retrieve that item. That's where our if comes in. That's where the Boolean logic evaluation, the, ex the execution decision based upon internal logic comes from. Is there an item in the list? Of course there is. There are three items at present. Print that item. In this case, the first item is going to be the number one. Generally speaking, lists are evaluated from left to right as they are written. Uh, that's largely, it's just a programming standard. It's sort of the way it generally implements. However, lists are not inherently sorted. So sometimes you'll want to control the way it interprets your list. But generally speaking, it's going to be left to right as it is written. Is there another item in the list? So we've printed our first item, we've retrieved it, we've used it, we're done with it. So now we're going to go to the next item in the list. We're going to increment what we call the index. So we started at item zero. Now we're going to go to the item that is indexed at one. In the same way that you would use, uh, for example, an index in a card catalog system. You, it, all the index is, and you'll see index is referenced often, all an index is is a number that identifies the location in the set, in the list, in the array, in whatever. So is there another item in the list? We increment our index and we see that yes, of course there is. In this case, it is the lowercase letter b. And then for a third item, we say, okay, is there another item in the list? Sure enough, there is, it's the number 150. So we print that. Now we reach a point that's a little bit trickier because we've run out of items in this list. There's nothing left in the list to print. There's nothing left to retrieve. So is there another item in the list? Evaluates to false and your for loop will terminate execution. So the condition here is actually an inverted condition. We talked about logical inversion in, in our earlier lesson about Boolean logic. What's happening here is a logical inversion. It's saying so long as there are items in the list, keep printing. When, there, when it becomes false, when there are no more items left to print, then you will continue your execution and you'll end the, or then you'll continue the program and end the execution of this loop. 
That's just important to understand. Again, all that's happening here is a is a piece of Boolean logic being evaluated every time this loop is run until such time as it evaluates to false and then the loop terminates. So here's another example. For i, where i is each number between 0 and 100, print i. This is also similar to Python, though not exactly the same for reasons we'll discuss when we talk about range in a later video. But for i in the range 100, so basically the numbers between 0 and 100, you will print i. So we're going to start out Python. We don't have to set this value. Python is going to print that value for us. Or to, not print. It's going to assign that value for us. So i is going to be set to 0 at the beginning of this loop. The logic will be evaluated. This is our case of Boolean logic. Is i less than or equal to 100? Of course, in this case it is because 0 is substantially smaller than 100. So it evaluates to true and we perform the logic underneath it. We print i and then we increment i. Now the way this for loop is designed, the way it's constructed, it will do all of the incrementation for us. We don't have to pay any attention to that. The for loop is covering. So we see that i is 1, which of course is less than 100. We continue our evaluation. This is going to happen for another 100 loops until finally we reach i equals 101. Now it's important to note that sort of like with the list that we were evaluating in the last slide, it didn't actually magically know, okay, that was all of the items I'm done. It had to first get to a condition where the evaluation turned out to be false. In this case, we see that 101 is still greater than 100. Therefore, it is going to evaluate to false, and therefore, we're going to end the execution of our for loop. So here's a knowledge check. I'm going to let you try and do this one at home. Uh, for i in range 10, again, evaluate that the same way we did with range 100. If you already know Python, you'll know why that's a little bit off. Don't worry about it. Also, if you already know Python, maybe start in the Python lessons. Anyway, for i in range 10, print i times 2. So go ahead and pause this video and take a couple of seconds to give it a shot. And you're either back because you figured it out, or you're back because you gave up, or you just watched me sit very still for a second as my dog snored in the background. Either way, we're now going to look at what happens. So, i is going to start out equaling 0, of course, and therefore we're going to perform our operation against the number 0. Print i times 2. Of course, 0 times 2 is 0. Then we're going to move on to 1. Now, 1 times 2 obviously is 2, so we're going to print that. Here we're kind of combining the two lit we're combining the two concepts we talked about earlier of performing a piece of logic to every item in a set and incrementing a number. So as we increment this number, we're going to multiply it by 2 each time until finally we get to the last number, which of course is going to be 10 in this case. We print 10 times 2, we say, okay, we're done. And then it's going to evaluate under the hood. This is all happening in Python. You're not seeing any of it. Under the hood, it's going to evaluate and say, oh, the next number, 11, is not actually a valid case for this. The conditional is false, and we're done executing. So that's all there is to for loops. That's the lesson. In this lesson, again, we talked about the concept of looping. We talked about what looping is used for, and we examined a few different implementations of a for loop. In our next lesson, when we come back, we're going to talk about another type of loop called a while loop. And I mentioned that one a few times in this lesson, but when you come back, we're going to spend a little bit of time really digging into it. I want to thank you all for being a part of this course. I want to thank you for watching. And of course, I look forward to having you back for our next lesson. As always, I'm your instructor, Joe Perry, and thank you for watching this on Cyberary On Demand.